they will talk about person who first talks about the app. So let me ask you this, how many are developers? Okay, quite a few. Okay. And how many of you have already worked with Google Cloud or at least created a Google Cloud? Okay, that's two, right? And any of you have worked with React before? Yeah. Okay. So of course Google Cloud development had not been quite simple earlier. Uh, my situation was like this when I actually first started to think as to how to develop a blog, I really didn't know what to do. Okay, but so when I started learning about it, I felt good. So let me ask you this, what are your expectations from this session? What are your thoughts when you came to the session? Sorry? Okay, can relate. Okay, alright. What else? Anything specific? You must have thought, okay, I'll get to learn this. Okay, okay, alright. What else? Okay, perfect. So, first of all, what are Google Work Blocks? Can anyone get me? It's a black egg. Okay, okay. Every content element, whether it is any paragraph, you will embed in the box. Okay, so, box actually gives you, uh, you can reimagine things how your custom edit, how your editor would look like. So, earlier you were using classic editor. Correct. And imagine when you have to copy paste a word document and when you paste it on the classic editor, it would not show the same way. The structure, the layout, the feel and look would change and it would not look the same on the front end as well. But when you have the Google blocks, if you have used it, you will observe that it looks exactly the same on the editor side and same way on the front end side as well. So it's a collection of blocks that makes up the content on the page. So everything is divided into okay. smaller chunks. It so it's good. easy, it's maintainable and reusable. So Gutenberg is basically a block, block based editor. It's a new way of editing in WordPress. Okay, so you can design things even if you don't have a technical background, you can still develop your blocks in a very beautiful fashion. Put the layout, the design, everything. Gotcha. It offers you reusability, so if you have created a block on one page or one uh, block, you can reuse it to others as well. Gotcha. And it improves your editing experience so because it's very simple. Gotcha. So, what are different ways of building blocks? First is ES5. Have any of you heard about ES5? What is it? So it's basically the version of JavaScript, like Mustard. So you can build blocks with ES5. ES5 basically is writing your blocks in native JavaScript. And then there is ES Next and ESX. Have you heard of ES Next? ES 2015 is also for ES6. So in 2015, ES 2015 was launched, or if you call it ES Next. So it has come up with different methods like arrow functions and then you will solve the problem of this. So all of those benefits you get with ES Next. So ES Next is going to maintain anything that came on and after 2015. And we will talk about ES6 in some time. So like why write blocks with ES6 and why not in native JavaScript? If I am a developer, I don't know a lot of about JavaScript. But then why do I need to write it in ES6? So let's understand why. First of all, ES6 provides you with arrow functions. Have you worked with arrow functions? Any of you? You have? Okay. So, those are very awesome. So, arrow functions basically shorten the syntax and solve the problem of this. So, when we used to program, we used to wonder where should I put this and what this is going to mean in which context. So, it solves the problem of this because Arrow functions don't bind to this value. Then you have block scoping. So you work with bar, right? A R bar. Right? Have you heard about hoisting? Yes. 
So it's taking JavaScript. Okay. All right. So when we were using var, then the problem was that there was a hosting problem, which means that the variables will leak out of their scope. So when the let and const came with ES6, it solved that problem because it narrows down to that particular scope only. <coughs> then we have modular system. So I think in most of the programming languages now, we are using a modular system, which means breaking your codes into pieces, into chunks. So why do you think that helps us? Think about it, you have a 1000 line of code, and if you run into an error, you have to go on each and every line up until 1000 lines to find out where that problem is. Right? But if you have broken down your code into smaller chunks, it's easy to read, maintainable, and easy to solve problems and find bugs and fix them. So it offers you modular pattern. It offers you classes. So do we have WordPress developer over here? We have WordPress. Okay, you work with PHP classes. So in similar fashion, ES6 introduced the concept of classes. Okay, so with classes it's very easy for you to uh, write course, it's easy, it's maintainable, and things like that. And then you have promises as well. So I'm going to show you an example of writing a blog in ES5. Okay, so if you don't have knowledge of ES6 and you want to write a native JavaScript, this is how writing a blog would look like. So I'm not getting into detail of what each element over here is. This is just to give you an example of how ES6 is going to benefit you if you write the blocks in that uh, format. Okay, so you have a save function here, then uh, it's returning wp element or create element, which actually creates a div element. It passes the blocks element over here uh, as an ID and also pop, pop, uh, adds a content over there. If you have to write the same thing in ES next, we can actually pull out this create element that you see over here. We can pull out out of the object using object restructuring. So wp.element is an object and we are pulling out the create element out of that. And now the same thing if you had to write in ES next, you can see the props is available, the attributes is available inside of props. You can pull it out like this using the basis. And then instead of writing wp.element or create element, you can directly write create element because you pulled that out from here. Okay, so it's shortening your syntax, plus you don't have to write the fun word function, the keyword function. You can directly use it like this and use the fat arrow function. Again, it shortens the syntax because you don't have to use return. You can directly use the round brackets and return the whole thing. Okay? Now let's talk about JSX. So what do you think JSX is? Sorry? Yeah. It's a TypeScript. HTML plus JS. Absolutely. Okay. okay. I don't know much more. That's alright. It's very simple. You will be able to find the answer in the name. So what do you think JS? Who said SML? Let's have a round of applause for him. Awesome. Yes, JavaScript. X, X, but that's it. So what is JS in JavaScript? Plus X. But why JS? So you must if you work with JavaScript, you would observe that when we are writing our HTML elements and if you want to insert variables inside of it, you have to use a plus sign, then single quote. And sometimes if the content is too long and becomes so messy. Right? So we realize that we are supposed to write JavaScript and HTML together. Okay, and it should be readable. So that's when the JSX got introduced and it makes our life simpler. <laughs> so it's basically a syntax that blends the HTML and JavaScript to the right and together. In a moment we will look at the example how it looks like. <laughs> So it provides the syntactic sugar for the act of create element or the to be element or create element in Gutenberg. So if you work with React, you would know that React dot create element actually creates element. It is just as similar to document dot create element in JavaScript. If you work with native JavaScript to create element, you do dot document dot create element. Similarly, in React, you do React dot create element. Now WordPress has abstracted React. 
and created a W object. So this is similar to this. Okay, in Gutenberg. So that would be element or create element. So what do you think Gutenberg has extracted the React for you? Why has it abstracted React? Okay, so initially when Gutenberg came in, it was difficult for everyone to digest and start using because most of us were PHP developers, right? We were not JavaScript developers. And even if you know JavaScript, you would know native JavaScript and not React. So that is why it is abstracted React for you so that you can still write your blocks in native JavaScript. Okay, I you can see it, but WP create WP element or create element. So what this will do is we create a div element, it will give it a class name and it will insert a content called hello. Okay, so you can see how long this is. Okay. If we have to write this using JSX, can you see? Does it look familiar at least to our brains? Okay, I'm writing HTML. Right? If you observe this is not class, this is class name. Why do you think this is class name and not class? Because also, class is a... So there are some keywords we, which we cannot use. For example, for. When you use for in label, for is a reserved keyword in JavaScript. Yeah, so for that we use HTML for when you write in JSX. Okay, so what this will do is nothing but create an div element, give it a class name and insert a content called hello world over here. Okay? Now let me explain this to you. So this is the type of the component. So this, you can consider it as a component which you can reuse. So when you have lower case letter, that means a built-in component. And when you start something with upper case letter, that means it's a React component. So sometimes when we have big chunks of code, we can wrap them into a component so that we can reuse it. Okay, so let's get back to the same example. So earlier we learned that we can write yes next and shorten our syntax and make it easy for ourselves. Now let's add JSX into this and how it looks like. So yes next plus JSX. So what this is going to do is this was like almost five to six line code and how long this is? Just three. Isn't that brilliant? Okay. So now, instead of writing wp.create element, wp element dot create element, you can just simply write JSX for that element. Which one looks better? You guys tell me. Right okay, one. Right one, isn't it? Awesome. So this, let's just recap. So why write blocks in JSX? Because it's simple. It's got all complex inside, but if you take it together, you know, simple. And our mind understands simplicity, right? We don't understand complex things. Easy to read and write code. Modular code organization, we can break it into chunks. Prevent needs for globals. We don't need to use global because we have cross code there. Let it pass. And we have fat other function. The shorter syntax. Okay, I think we've already discussed all of this. So, what challenges do you think we can face if we write our blog in ES6? Compatibility. Compatibility? Okay. So, what else can you explain? What do you mean by compatibility? Sorry? Transpiration, absolutely. So do you think all browsers would understand ES6? No, right? So the challenge is it requires an extra build step for code transformation. We need to convert our ESNex into a code that I can understand and all browsers can understand. So ES5 without JSX can straight run into browsers. If you're writing a native JavaScript, it can run straight into the browser. You don't have to transfer. Locating and understanding the compiled source code could be difficult, so it bundles up the code and that could be difficult to read. Tooling around JavaScript could be intimidating. 
which means when you have to transpire, when you have to bundle code using, using what? What tool can be used? Sorry? Babel, common set Babel? Babel is used to convert. What else? Webpack. 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 Okay, so let's have a look. ES6, I have a function. I have not support. Okay, S supports Firefox, there is Chrome, there is Safari, there is and so on. So there are some open and many desert, library, desert, and then we have I compile code. So to provide that, we need to use Babel to transpile the code. So what's the solution? So initially when the code bug came in, we had to do everything from scratch. And like I said, it's very intimidating for developers who don't know a lot about how to build, uh, how to use Webpack, how to use Babel. So, Kutuba came with a solution. Can anyone of you tell me what that means? Okay, okay. I have other ways. Okay. Sorry? Absolutely awesome. Let's have for it. What does it mean? What does it So, they came with a package. They said, don't worry. You don't know how to bundle. We'll help you. Just go ahead and install this package, I'll give you a simple command, just run it and it's done. Okay. So there's a thumbs up, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll make it for you. Okay, so it's a collection of reusable script for WordPress development, not just blog. So what does it, what does it do? It has tracked the required library away to standardize and simplify development. Okay, so it does all the setup of Babel and uh, webpack so it does all the bundling for you you just have to install this package which we will see in a moment and there is a dependency in the default configuration webpack and babel and the best part is that it not only helps you uh, set up the webpack and babel environment but you don't have to set up your linting tools have you guys heard of jest what is jest for testing javascript Okay, good. Styling for CSS. Okay, so it already gives you that environment. You can just run the command and you can write your test and then you have to test it. And it also checks for the required license and engine. Sometimes you must have observed that uh, you use some version of Node and NPM and that code doesn't work for someone else because they are using a different version. Okay, so it checks for that environment whether you have the correct engines for Node and NPM or not. And if you have worked with Node and Node earlier, you have. So let's begin with blog development. So build blog in three steps. So then, like I said, initially you might think it's very difficult. That's why I have simplified this for you. And we will learn to build blogs just in three steps. The first step, install packages. Which package are you going to install? What is Scripts. So let's install this package. So what we're going to do is we will create a plugin, and with that plugin we will create a custom blog, and you will observe how easy and simple it is. So we will go to a terminal, which is just to get the IR. So we will create a directory called custom blogs. Then we will go to that directory on terminal. Then we will do npm init. What does npm init do? Initialize the absolutely and creates which file for you? Node modules. So you just need to install the package. npm i i is the short for install. Okay. Save there, which means it will be saved as dependency. I don't need this in the build process, I just need it for dependency. Then you can use save exact. Who can tell me why should we use save exact? If it's matching with the environment, exact matching with the environment. Okay, but how would that help? It's compatible or not okay. with the node version. How many of you have submitted a package on MDM registry? No, you have? Awesome, awesome. So, guys, what happens when you submit a package on MDM? MDM is basically a library where you can load all the packages, even WordPress scripts besides over there. You can install it from there. So anyone can submit it, but there is no checking that happens. Unlike your WordPress, if you submit a plugin or theme on WordPress, then they check it. 
But if you submit it on, on the NPM registry, they don't check it. Which means we just have to trust the developers blindly. I'm not saying they are bad developers, but they may tend to make mistakes, right? If you go and install all the packages and if you leave the version number open, the next time you install it, it can go onto a higher version. Now, if that package is not tested, it might break your code. What SaveExact does is it goes ahead and uh, install the exact version number in the package.json. Which means the next time you install it, it will only break that version and not take the new version. So, you will be secure. Then you will create a source directory where you will keep your JavaScript file. So, we will create index.php for our uh, plugin, any file, and we will create index.js instead of source. We will create editor.css for the style on the editor end, which is the backend, and the style.css for the front end. So this is how the directory structure would look like. So you would have the node module where WordPress script will install all the packages. You will have the package.json which contains all the information of your uh, packages that you installed and you have package.json. You have source directory where it will contain the CSS files and your JavaScript file and then you have the main index.json. Clear so so far? Now there are two things. So because you want to convert the ESNext into the JavaScript that all browsers can understand, we need one file as an entry point. So inside of your source directory of index.js where you will write all of your block related JavaScript. And WordPress script behind the scene is going to use webpack and bundle it together and give you a combined file. Okay. So you can write uh, JavaScript files that you can have modular pattern, you can have 10 files, you go to bundle all of them together and just give you one file. There is one more benefit of doing that by using the pack. What do you think of that game? In terms of performance? Compression. Sorry? Compression. Okay, compression is one. So the size you're talking about. What else? Number of requests. Now who said that? Awesome. Number of requests. Yes, you have done a uh, check on the Pony website performance. Uh, like you must have observed it gives you a message yeah. saying that you have like uh, 10 requests or 100 requests so you need to reduce the number of requests or the number of requests so slow the performance of your website is going to be so if imagine if you have different files like home.js, account.js that many requests will go similarly for style sheets also if you have multiple style sheets multiple requests will go to go so what my client is going to do is going to bundle everything together and just give you one file even for CSS Okay, that means only one request will go, so performance will increase, correct? The next thing you need to do is you just need to add some scripts in your package.json. This script is going to run webpack uh, and Babel as the background and is going to eventually use WP script start. You can change the name, you can put name anything you want. You can do npm run start and start a development server, which is going to bundle all your files. This is for build process when you are publishing it uh, live. So let's run npm start. So what are we doing? We are running this command on a terminal. npm run start. See what happens. So when we run npm start, you can see the webpack is watching the file. So it bundles your files together. It takes your index.js from the source directory and bundles it up and gives you one file in the build directory. So now the directory structure looks like this. It has taken the index.js from here and it has bundled it together and gives you one file in the bin directory by default. You can change the directory name also later on, but by default it will create it into bin directory. So step one is done. You think step one was easy simple? Yeah. Step 2, register the block server side of PHP. So what we need to do is, we just need to do two things. First, use add action. And hook your custom function register block to the init code. Okay, so when this script reaches init, this function will be called and this will be able to register your block. Okay, now let's get inside this register block function. The first thing we need to do is register size because we want to know how our block will look on the front end 
and how our block will look in the editor side. So you can use the same style sheet for frontend as well as the editor, or you can have two separate files as well. So let's say we want to have two separate files. So we go to register styles. So what does developer? You are familiar with this function? Yeah. What does it do? And use this script. So this doesn't help you, but this registers this. Okay, so, so this one is basically the hook name. So you must have included a style sheet uh, in WordPress when you're doing team development or current development. So use that function. This is the hook name, a unique hook name. Then you are passing the URL of the uh, style sheet. This is just a concept that I'm using to shorten it. Then it asks for dependency. I don't have any dependency, so I'll leave it at me. Anyone knows what PyTag does? So this parameter is for version number of your style sheet, correct? Now you must have observed if you, if you use the fixed version number, if you make any changes in your style sheet, it doesn't reflect because the user the browser cached version. What file time does, and like I said, is it goes ahead and checks the last development, uh, last modified uh, file change and it prints the timestamp of that. So every time you make some changes, it gives you a unique version of it. It was using timestamp. Okay, so this is done. So we registered the frontend style. Then we register the one for the editor. Same way. So this for this one as well. And the last one is we register our JavaScript. Where we will write the JavaScript for editing our blog. So you can see there are some dependencies like WP block, WP element, WP editor, WP components, and so on. What do you think these are? Okay, 
So remember we had uh, added the dependency w underscore iadn. Now this will be available as an object and you will pull out this function w underscore. So what does that do? It helps you transcript. Right. Same thing you will do here as well. And we are using object restructuring to pull out the function out of this object. Okay. Then we are pulling out the register block type function out of WP called blocks function. So this function will help us register block client side to the browser. So we are putting the block uh, name and giving a unique name using a namespace so that it doesn't uh, clash with other blocks. And then we are giving it a name custom block. So this is the block name. And this is the block configuration object where you will write all the code for block. Now let's get into this. First thing it requires the title. So when you go to the editor and you select your block, it will need some identification like the title. So you can put title over here like this, and because you're using internationalization function. You can use this name like your okay, and this is your text domain. Similarly, you can use icon. Uh, what does have reward icons? What are those icons called? Cash icons? Absolutely. Can you use your custom icons? You can. You can? You can use it. You can use SPGs also. Currently, I'm using the default cash box. Then category. Why do you think we need to define category? So when you go to the editor, you click on the plus sign to select your block. So you can see different there are different categories like common blocks, and then there are different other types of categories. So depending on where you what name you mention, your block will show under that category. So we have another function called edit. So what this function basically is going to do, whatever you put over here is going to reflect onto your what this editor. So currently we are using JSX for just returning hello world. What this will do? This will do that will be dot element dot create element. So it's going to create this element for you. And then we have to save method. So whatever you want to uh, return from here will be saved into database. So there are two main important functions. One is edit and save. Edit is responsible for what you see in the editor, and save is responsible for what goes into the database and what will be displayed on the front end side. Okay, so let's discuss in detail edit function. So it describes the structure of the block. I think we already covered that. Let's decide what editor will render when the block is used in the editor. Save method decides how your content will look like in the front end. Defines how the attribute combines together with the grid map of markup, markup, then save like and save to the table. So let's run our script again. So when we run npm run start, this is how it's going to look like. Again, it's going to bundle up your index.js from source directory into which directory? Build. Build. Absolutely. So our block, first block is created. You can see it goes to common block, then custom block, hello world, save it, view post, and this is our so then we have created our first block. Can we clap for ourselves? How many of you think it was simple? Okay, quite a few. Let's that done as a job. Yes. Okay, thanks. Let's continue. Now we're going to go into advanced. So registering a block, creating a block was up until here. Now from here on is advanced topic. Which means what goes behind the scene, what each of these elements are. So first is state of a block. So if you work with React, you would know what state is. State is nothing but an object that allows you to hold some content for a component. Similarly, Gutenberg also, state is a plain JavaScript object. So why do you think we need state? It's because when the user is editing, uh, he's writing some content. We need some way or some means to store that information so that we can save it to the database. So state is an object that will store that information. So state of a block is maintained through the editing session. Through the editing session. 
to achieve dynamic change in the block structure where the user changes the block. Every time the block is updated, array method is called. Now I will show you how the content for your block looks like into the database. So all of you have worked with the previous editor and you know that the content goes with like div element and all that. There is a slight difference in the looking field of that. Let's have a look. Does it look familiar? Has any one of you seen this before? How many have? One, two, two three, three. So like this is comment element. So what this is doing is basically this is putting WP colon and the name of the block that you at the time of registration. This is your element that you created. What this does is it adds WP dash block and then the name of the block as the class name. Okay? And then this is the content and then it ends it. One thing does it need to save this information into a comment. What's the benefit? The information into the comment elevator, we can actually use your JSON format and pass that data. And we can ensure that that data doesn't leak out into another block. Now, when we are using it here, we are very limited. We can only use the syntax that it provides us. But here we can play with it because the browser will ignore this. So now, how do we read that information? So like for Babel, uh, like for uh, ES6 to convert that, we needed a transpiler like Babel. So for this as well, we need something. So let's have a look. There is something called HPQ. Okay. The HPQ is a small library used to pass and query the HTML markup into an object shape. So what we are going to store into that comment elevator, you can pass that information using HPQ. So Gutenberg behind the scene uses this to pass that information. So coming back to attributes, so we have something called attributes. They help you extract the block, block attribute value from the same post content. So whenever you save some information and that goes into the database, you can extract that information using attributes. So when you define these attributes and you register block type, it is passed to edit and save. So I will show you in a moment how the attributes look like, uh, but they will be available to your edit and save methods as props. So let's define an attribute. Let's go back to our register block type function. Where is this? This is the JavaScript file. This looks familiar at the time of registration of block. So inside of the same function, we are going to use attributes. So it is nothing but an object, key value pair. You can put the name as full name. Uh, you can choose any name you want. Type is array. Source children. And selector is P. So this would force children mean this would look for the text inside of the selector. So what this means is that go ahead and grab P element, okay, and inside of that look for the content which is there inside of this. Okay, and the type of the object is array. So I will show you that now. Now this value will be available in edit and save. Let's console log and see how it looks like. So when you console attributes. You will see it's an object, it gives you full name as key, and then you have an array available. Correctly, it's empty because the user hasn't typed anything inside of this. Then you have class name, you have the name of the block. It gives you more information, but I'm only showing you the ones which are related to this time. You have a set attribute function. Have you heard of set state in React? What set state does is it goes ahead and uh, changes the state value, update the state value. So the same thing is done using set attributes in Reusable components. So let's say if you create something and then you want to reuse, reuse it in another block or another page, we can use reusable components. So instead of creating DOM nodes using create element, we can encapsulate the behavior using components. It hides the complexity uh, into their self-contained units. And many blocks share the same complex behavior. So one of the reusable component is rich text. Okay, so you can think of this as your text area. You can pull it out out of the WP editor and then use it. 
So let's say we want to create a block in which there is an input element, let's say text area, and user enters something and we want to save it to the database and show that it's in front end. Because earlier we have been showing just a static block. We put hello world and that's what is being saved into the database. It is not dynamic. User do not change anything from that, right? So if you want to create a dynamic block where the user can enter some information into the editor and save that information and read it from all of this way. So using object instruction, we can put all of this information from props. Full name, set attributes, class name. And then we can return this component to the switch test. First thing is the tag name, which element you want to create, you want to create div. Second is a placeholder. The placeholder I want to name it as full name, and because we are using the translation function, it can be translated. Then we have value. Value will be full name. Whatever the user enters, they will not be dynamically added. Then we have, we have putting an on change event. So whenever the user types something, this event will be fired. And then this anonymous function will be called, which calls the set attribute, and the job of which will be to update the state with the new value. You have the class name. Now inside of the save, we just have to return this element because that value of full name will be available inside of saves inside of prop object. So we can use that element here and then we can just return that element using this text content. And this is the data that will be stored into the database. So if we put everything together, this is how it looks like. But let me simplify this for So we define attributes. We set the type to array, source to children, selected to div. Then we have the edit method. Here we are defining the rich text, we are adding an event whenever the users type something. This event is fired. We change the string value of the attributes and that gets passed to props. And we pass that to the same method whenever you can save some information. So let's check in detail. The users enter some data. So let's have a look at it visually what happens. Okay. So user types something. So let's look at what is happening on the right hand side. Can you see immediately it's updating the state? We select the block, do the type something, and that value gets stored in the name, and the event is triggered. Set attribute is changing the state and updating the value of the full name. Right? So that's what happens in the edit. Now let's look at the same method. So when will the same method be called? When the user publishes the post. When it gets saved. Yeah. So it publishes, it gets saved, you can see same method is called and the data is available because it was passed as props to it. So there are more ways of building blocks. Uh, you guys are already aware of Amazon based trade wooden block, block, right? Kind of a polar plate. We have Articam's wooden works built middleware as well that you can use. There are third party libraries available. For example, you have editor blocks, you have Gutenberg Hub, Gutenberg Cloud. And then, if you want to go into detail of WordPress core for Gutenberg for development or contribution and more, you can go to the WordPress repository for Gutenberg. So, for example, register from type, you can find it into this file. Similarly, a component score file are going to be available here in the number and slide. So, okay, if you want to see the codes for what I've explained over here, you can go to GitHub, manage the yet for custom blocks, and you will find these codes. If you want more blocks, there is also a Gutenberg workshop that I've created. You can find more information here. So, earlier, my situation was like this, but when I actually learned and started development, I promise you when you start development, your situation will be like this. <laughs> yeah, go! Oh.